pay for it as though, you, as though you're having it now. The benefits of it are funerals are increasing every year, people know that. Uh, and if there's no funeral plan in place, it's your next of kin's responsibility. So when you die, it's your children or whoever's your next of kin, they've got to pay for the funeral and arrange it. Um, with a funeral plan, you can pay for it at today's prices, and whenever it's used, your funeral is guaranteed to be paid for. So it stops your next of kin having any financial issues, potentially, and it stops them having any emotional problems as well, with regards to planning the funeral. Because if you've got a son and a daughter, they might disagree about how you're meant to be laid to rest. In a funeral plan, you can do it yourself. Um, some people, we had this yesterday, a lady said, I've got life insurance for that. So when, my, when I die, my life insurance will pay out, and that'll pay for my funeral. What we said to her was, your life insurance, when does it end? And she said, 2033, and I'll be 65. Um, and what I said to her is, well, if you live past 65, what are you going to do then? She didn't quite understand that she thought the life insurance pays out at 65. It doesn't, life insurance only pays out if you die. And if you live past the last instalment date, there's no cash in value to most life insurance. Um, so she wouldn't have had that plan in place. Other people have said, well, I've got an ISA, and that will pay for my funeral when I die. What we say to that is your ISA might be getting 4, 5, 6% a year maybe. All right, well, funeral plans are going up higher than that. The stats have proved in the last 10 years they're going up more than 4, 5, 6% a year. Uh, and also with that ISA, whenever that lady passes away, she'll pay for the funeral at that day's prices. Um, it's anticipated to be in the next 10 years about 8,000 for your funeral, whereas at the moment it's about five. All right, um, so uh, basically our argument to her was if you're not using the money for anything else, put it towards your funeral plan and you fix the cost. All right, so whenever you die, it's paid for. We say with funeral plans, it's one of the best investments you can make, but it's not an investment you'll ever see the return of. It's your children, the next kin will benefit from it. So that's what we do. We also travel. So, um, Albert, would you answer yes? Yes. Yeah. Um, have any feedback into a trust? So, okay. No. Um, possible, again, it's all possibility. The possible issue with that is if it's not in trust when you leave it to someone, it's, good, it's an asset. Um, you could push their, it may increase your estate, but it will increase your estate if you claim on it, and it might be above the inheritance tax threshold. Um, the inheritance tax is 40%, it's a big one. All right? uh, and the other problem with inheritance tax, if it's due, it must be paid before you get your inheritance. So if you're due 100,000, but your inheritance tax is 40%, you've got to pay 40,000 before you get your 100,000. Right, so that's a bit of a, that's not right, but that's how it is. Um, so if something's in trust, it bypasses that.